The mass deployment of humanoid robots in the factories of major automakers has begun. For instance, BMW has signed a commercial agreement with the robotic startup figure, while the well-known Boston Dynamics robot Atlas, which can now unpack and stack automotive shock absorbers, will be able to demonstrate all its skills and practice at one of Hyundai's automotive plants. Billionaire Bill Gates talked about the top five robots today, according to his opinion. The freezing temperatures in Chicago turned Tesla charging stations into electric car graveyards. Additionally, Chinese military, who publicly acknowledged the use of large language models like GPT and military purposes for the first time, these and other high-tech news in one video. The moment has come when Boston Dynamics robots, which we are accustomed to seeing in exciting dances and tricks, are beginning to approach real-world industrial applications. The latest abilities of the Atlas robot, which can now unpack and move automotive shock absorbers, could be a turning point in its career. The automotive manufacturing sector, where precision, reliability, and the ability to handle heavy components are required, seems like the ideal place for humanoid robots. Specialized industrial robots are already widely used here, but complex and multifaceted tasks requiring a human touch have so far remained beyond their capabilities. Elon Musk has already expressed his intention to use Tesla Optimus robots at Tesla factories, while the startup figure plans to test its developments in BMW production. Now, Boston Dynamics, owned by Hyundai, could make its contribution by offering its Atlas robot for automotive manufacturing work. Although Atlas is still an experimental project, it demonstrates tremendous potential among humanoid robots, and its application in the commercial sphere could be a significant step in the development of robotics, justifying years of academic research. Let's move on to BMW production facilities, where the Germans have signed a commercial agreement with the robotics startup Figure. As announced, Figure is fulfilling its promise to quickly deploy its Android robots to perform real useful work. Under the recently signed commercial agreement with BMW, Figure has begun identifying initial use cases at the Spartanburg plant and has started training the bots for phase deployment on site. Brett Adcock, the founder and CEO of Figure, says that automakers have accumulated significant experience in robotics and have worked extensively with humanoids. For example, Honda with Asimo, Tesla with Optimus, Hyundai owning Boston Dynamics, and there is also the Toyota Robotics Institute. These companies have vast experience in robotics, although it is focused on specific tasks rather than general purpose. According to Adcock, the BMW team has integrated a lot of robotics at the Spartanburg plant. However, the automaker wanted to address further automation challenges with more agile and mobile robots. Training for the first tasks that Figure will begin performing at BMW has already begun in Figure's laboratories, although both companies have not yet announced exactly what the androids will be doing in the factory workshops. Figure will start deployment with a small number of robots. It may take 12 to 24 months for their actual integration into BMW's production processes. Amidst the constantly growing number of startup companies racing to create a universal robot, Bill Gates recently revealed the top five projects in this field that he considers the best. Taking the first place in the billionaire's personal ranking is the company Agile Robotics. It has already sent its bots for testing at Amazon and is now preparing to increase production capacity to 10,000 robots per year. The second spot goes to the Tevil project. These are non-humanoid robots, and the concept might seem quite strange at first glance, but it appears to be very viable, operating in gardens in Italy, the US, Israel, and other countries. The third place goes to Aptronic and its humanoid robot Apollo, which is set to become available for purchase this year. This general-purpose robot can be programmed to perform a wide range of tasks, from logistics and manufacturing to assisting with household chores. It's worth noting that programming for each task is a very inconvenient way to implement a universal robot. Companies like Figure and the Toyota Research Institute are currently working on teaching robots through demonstration, which is much more effective. But let's get back to Bill Gates's preferences. The fourth promising project he mentioned is the Robotics and Mechanisms Laboratory at the University of California, Romella. There, not only humanoid robots, but also various alternative forms of robots are born and developed. By the way, it's not a startup, which doesn't make its developments any less promising. And finally, in fifth place is Field AI, a company creating autonomy systems for robots of any form factor, allowing them to navigate the streets and move in any environment while being prepared for unpredictable conditions. 
Chinese military officials have publicly acknowledged for the first time the widespread use of large language models similar to GPT-like chatbots for military purposes. Most modern artificial intelligence systems are based on traditional military board games, while the digital format and computational capabilities of computers have allowed their systems to quickly become more complex, they still lack the flexibility of human communication. Additionally, a skilled and unpredictable human opponent can deceive a machine. Large language models, having studied nearly all aspects of society, are already helping Chinese military AI better understand people. Military artificial intelligence can convert vast amounts of data from sensors, cameras, and frontline reports into descriptive language or images and pass them on to large language models. After receiving and understanding the data, large language models automatically generate concise messages for in-depth information exchange regarding the combat situation. The entire process occurs without human involvement. According to project leaders, their goal is to make military AI more human-like so they can better understand the intentions of command at all levels and communicate more effectively with humans. This is the first instance of the Chinese military publicly acknowledging the use of commercial large language models for military purposes. Two chatbots, Ernie and Spark, developed by Baidu and iFlyTech, respectively, were used in the experiment. The freezing temperatures in Chicago turned Tesla charging stations into electric car graveyards. Many electric vehicles that came to recharge their batteries got stuck there with empty batteries. After connecting, the charging process simply does not start. Some Tesla owners had to call for a tow truck to take their cars to the local Tesla service center. In the app, most supercharger stations are marked as fully occupied. Different explanations are being discussed online, including that affected car owners did not prepare their batteries for charging, although the company recommends doing so, especially in cold weather. However, as noted, battery preparation should occur automatically when entering the supercharger station at the command of the navigation system. So either this function did not work for some reason, or it's not the issue. It's possible that the problem lies with the station itself, which may not be adapted to such freezing temperatures. Supporting this version is also the fact that in Norway, where it's no warmer, there are many Tesla electric cars, and they somehow managed to charge. There have been no official comments from Tesla on the matter. Chinese aerospace company Ehang is gearing up to launch sales of its unmanned electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, the EH-216S. Starting April 1st this year, sales of this innovative device will begin in China. The eVTOL, capable of carrying two passengers, has a flight range of 30 kilometers and a maximum speed of 130 kilometers per hour. Equipped with 16 rotors, the drone operates entirely autonomously. This unmanned aircraft has already been granted permission for manned flights, albeit only within China for now. The EH-216S is proposed for sightseeing at low altitudes and other urban tourism purposes. The drone's development is not new. The first trials of this air vehicle were conducted by Ehang in 2017 and 2018, with more than 4,000 test flights completed since then. Ehang's move to launch sales of its UAV is accompanied by successful tests of the Archer Air Taxi, as mentioned in our previous issue. Archer has also completed its first phase of flight testing. These developments pave the way for the emergence of a new mode of transportation, expected to begin commercial operation in 2025. Write in the comments what you liked most after watching this video. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the Caro Show channel. Also check out our previous videos. See you next time.